Soldering is a part of FPV, as much as we might sometimes wish it wasn't. And a whole lot of people out there think that they're bad at soldering. S some of them are. But a lot of people who think they're bad at soldering actually are just using a bad soldering iron. And it turns out a good soldering iron doesn't have to be ex super expensive. The one that we're going to look at today is only about $45. And it's portable too. So you can do in-field repairs. And no, this is not a TS-100. If you're thinking, oh, this is a TS-100, I already know about that. This is the new king of portable soldering irons. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The product that we're looking at today was purchased by me with my own money. I have not received any cash or any other form of compensation in exchange for this review, and no one has had any approval or preconditions on the contents of this video before it was released. This is the Pine 64 Pinacil, pine sill. I don't, I don't know the right way to say it. It's the soldering iron from Pine 64. And if you're thinking it looks an awful lot like a TS-100, you're right. And if you haven't heard of the TS-100 before, you should know that it has been just the king of portable soldering irons. I will make an argument today until now. And what made the TS-100 so great and what makes the Pine 64 so great is it's heating performance. It heats up quickly, maintains heat, and it is temperature controlled so it hits a precise temperature target that you're going for. And at the end of the day, that's really all a soldering iron has to do. But there are a couple things that make the Pine 64 better than the TS-100. This is the feature that made me look for a replacement for my TS-100. You see, the TS-100 and most soldering irons like it are powered from a barrel plug like this, and you plug it into a battery, an XT60, or you plug it into a wall charger, it's up to you, and they solder. Mine got loose because as you're sort of moving this around, soldering with it, I guess it got tugged or something, and it kept turning off while I was soldering. And I looked at the TS-80 soldering iron, which is also a very good soldering iron, but I'm gonna tell you why I chose this one instead. I looked at the TS-80 and it's powered from USB-C, and USB-C is very secure. USB-C connectors are quite good. And I thought I'd like an iron that's powered from USB-C. But the TS-80, as good as it is, there's two reasons why I didn't choose it and I don't recommend you choose it. And the first is that the TS-80 is more expensive than the Pine 64. Uh, same for the TS-100. The TS-100 is still available today. It and the TS-80 both come in around $60 to $80. This is closer to $40 to $45. The other reason the Pine 64 is so good is that it uses standard TS-100 soldering tips. And these tips are widely available all over the internet for about $10 a piece. Whereas the TS-80, which has a different design of the tip, number one, they are not available in very many stores. I only found a few stores that had them and they're way more expensive. The TS-80 tips are closer to $30 a piece, at least in my searching. So if all this was, was a $45 version of the TS-100 that you could power from both a barrel plug or a USB charger, that would be a win for me. But there is a lot more to it than that. Let's take a look at the menus. And in order to do that, I'm gonna power it up from this SpeedyB adapter, which also has a quick charge capable USB plug on it. You might be thinking, well, if you've got an XT60, why don't you just use the barrel adapter? Yeah, you could do that too, but I wanna show you why I'm doing it this way instead. So when we plug it in, it'll power on up. And the first thing you're gonna notice is it is not set up for my left-handedness. Oh, there we go, I fixed it. You can actually change this in the menus to use its accelerometer to detect whether you're holding it left-handed or right-handed and flip the screen. As a left-handed person, I really appreciate this. The status screen is currently showing our input voltage, which is 8.9 volts, or nine volts, uh, and the tip temperature as well as the set temperature, but the tip is not hot yet because it is in uh, pause mode, if you will, and if I just press the plus key, it will begin powering up and heating up the tip. And you're gonna notice that the tip is not heating up very fast, and this is why I wanted to power this from USB. Because you can see that it's currently pulling only 8.5 watts. But if we look at this page from the wiki for the Pinacil soldering iron, yeah, it's a soldering iron with a wiki. Are you sold yet? 
<laughs> if we look at this page, we can see that the amount of power it can pull on USB depends heavily on the capabilities of the USB charger. And most USB chargers aren't going to be able to provide the full power that this can draw. So it can pull up to 60 watts, but only if the charger is capable of outputting 20 volts. If you've got a USB-C charger for like a MacBook, you're good to go. If you've got a USB-C charger for your phone, you're not going to get the full output power. Although it will like try to work, it just won't heat up very fast. So instead, we're going to grab this 5S battery and we're going to plug it in to the XT60 and we're going to plug the uh, soldering iron in that way. And by the way, yeah, the soldering iron is only rated for 21 volts. You can plug a 6S battery into it and it might not immediately explode. In fact, some people, I used to run my TS100 off of 6S all the time and it was fine, but technically it's only rated for 21 volts. So if you did try to run it off 6S, you'd be taking that risk on yourself. And if we plug in here and now we can see we're pulling 30, 40 watts. Ah, we're cranking the temperature. It's going up so fast and isn't that freaking nice? Now you may notice that my iron is going to a temperature of 420 degrees Celsius. And in fact, the max temperature of this iron is actually 450 degrees. So why is it not? Why isn't it getting up to 450? Good question. I don't have an answer for you there. <laughs> it'll go, it'll nominally go to up to 450 or down as low as like, surely as low as you want, right? I don't know why you'd want to go that low, but you can. And this is basically the function of the soldering iron. You set a temperature, it goes to the temperature, you solder, life is good. It's also got a little foot here so that you can set it down without it trying to roll away and hopefully without it messing up your desk. And if you set it down for long enough, it'll go into standby mode and cool down the tip so you're not sucking your battery down or burning your tip. And you saw it heats up relatively quickly when you pick it back up again. Next, I want to take you through the menu so you can see all the features and customizability of this iron. And in order to do that, I've actually reset it back to factory defaults. The menu that you first saw when I powered up was how I had it set for my personal screwing around with it. This is what you're going to see when it first powers up. And you can press this button to go into the menu, or you can press the plus button to begin soldering. If you press the plus button, it will begin coming to temp. And of course you can set the temp. You can adjust it in whatever increment you want. Uh, if while you are soldering, you hold down the minus key, it will go into standby mode and cool down the tip. And if you press the plus key, it will begin heating up to its set temperature. If I press the minus key one time, it will go into the settings menu. That's what this little gear means. And within that menu, pressing the minus button moves me through the menu. Pressing the plus button moves me into the menu or changes the options. A little bit confusing, but you do get used to it. And the first thing we can change is the power source. It can either be a DC adapter or a battery. This is used to set the low voltage threshold. So it warns you when you're about to kill your battery. Uh, and you'll see it will let you set a 6S battery as your power source. If you've decided to take the risk potentially of damaging the iron by running it off 6S. So we'll set that to 5S, which is what our current battery is. The quick charge voltage allows you to decide how much voltage the battery will try to draw or the, the iron will try to draw from a quick charger. It will run off of nine volts or even five volts, but it will not actually heat the tip. You're gonna need at least 12 volts to heat the tip and better a USB PD charger, power delivery charger, which can deliver up to 20 volts. That would be the ideal if you're trying to run it off USB. The way boost temp works is, let's say you've got the iron set at 350 degrees Celsius, but temporarily you wanna crank the heat to something larger. You can hold down the plus key, which will boost it up to this boost temp, which you could set at like 420 or 450, and then quickly get your job done and it'll go back down to your set temp. So you just don't have to hold that button down, 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 down to change your temp back and forth. Auto start controls the temperature of the iron when you first power up. You can have it immediately go to temperature and begin soldering. You can have it be in a sleep mode where it waits for you to pick it up or uh, various other options, basically controlling whether it gets hot and under what conditions it gets hot after power up. The temp change short and temp change long control the effect of holding down or short pressing the plus and minus buttons to raise or lower the temperature. For example, I don't really think there's a reason to have a one degree change. So I would set temp change short to 10 degrees and temp change long to 50 degrees. And then I could more quickly and easily move through the temperature range. Sleep mode controls when the 
iron will automatically go into sleep mode and lower its temperature. If, in other words, if you set it down and don't move it for a while. And in the user interface, you have the choice of changing the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit if you're a freaking heathen like me, but I also solder in Celsius. Uh, you can change the display orientation from right to left hand, or I like it in auto, so it automatically goes back and forth depending on which way I'm holding it. And there we go. That is almost everything you need to know about the TS-100s. I'm sorry, I mean the Pinnacell Pine 64 Pinnacell soldering iron. The only thing that you haven't seen me do with it is actually solder with it. And here's, the th here's why I'm not going to even bother showing you. Uh, I can solder well with crappy soldering irons. So me soldering with it isn't going to prove that it's a good soldering iron. I just... I'm going to lean on the legacy of the TS-100. And if you don't know that legacy, take my word for it or do some reading. It is an exceptionally good soldering iron. And this takes everything that was good about the TS-100 and adds a few more things to it and is at a freaking reasonable freaking price. And it's got a wiki and an open source community around it. If you're into that, this is a very... This, I'm so glad I found this. If you're also glad that you found it and you're looking for a soldering iron, there's a link in the video description. It is an affiliate link. Assuming this is sold at stores at which I have affiliates. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, but there's links down there for where you can get it. And the other thing as a bonus is I want to show you, I've got this stuff in my travel soldering kit. And I'm going to do a video where I go through this stuff and tell you what I have in here. What's in here? Oh, I want to do another video. So I'll put a link to a, ca a card on screen where you can watch that video. If you're interested in building a travel soldering kit, uh, this is a great tip for you. And I'll have links to all of that stuff as well. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.